only mode. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ronalyn with Hawaii's Better Business Bureau, and welcome to today's webinar. On your screen, you should see two windows, the presentation window and the control panel located in the upper right corner. To enlarge and minimize the control panel, click the black arrows on the upper right corner. Here you can adjust your audio settings and send your questions, and we will answer those questions after the webinar. Today we welcome back Attila Saris, whose background is in statistics and database design. His accomplishments include having been the CEO, COO for Wildgate, Wildgate Wireless, a mainland telecommunications carrier, where he built and managed a staff and statewide data network. He later helped to pioneer the Best Buy Geek Squad business pilot program, where he established a presence in the Hawaii business community. He is currently the owner of SOS Tech Solutions and directs company projects out of the Manoa Innovation Center. You may recognize him from speaking engagements or appearances on the KHNL morning news or his weekly Think Tech Friday TV show. He also enjoys talking at events and spending time with his wife and two children. So now I'll hand it over to Attila. Well, thank you, Ronalyn, for that introduction. And and thank you for having me here today. Really appreciate you having me here. And, uh, you know, the best way to, you know, what we're going to talk about today, today's topic, is uh, the holiday tech. And uh, do one of these every year and, you know, try to help people uh, figure out what to do during the holidays, alleviate a little bit of stress. And, uh, of course, to uh, start the, uh, start the uh, show here, I always like to start with a little story. Now, you know, a, a buddy of mine, Jason, some years back, uh, he gave me and my family a, a Christmas present. It was a, a, a Samsung Blu-ray player. And he also got us Avatar on uh, Blu-ray. Now, he's a very nice guy, and uh, he is actually a little outrageous. That's him there. Um, in that picture of Jason, it was actually from Halloween. And, yes, his daughter was very confused why he stole her costume. Anyways, James, uh, Jason, uh, he purchased the Samsung Blu-ray player uh, in a way that played out probably something like this. He, he walked into Best Buy one November afternoon. He looked around and said, hey, you know, that Attila guy, that's me, uh, likes technology. Uh, this Samsung thing sure looks expensive. Let's get this and get out. I'm hungry. So, of course, uh, you know, as thankful and grateful as I was for the wonderful gift, uh, after watching Avatar a couple times, uh, you know, the player sat there kind of gathering dust for years. Now, let me ask you, why do you think that happened to me? Now, have you ever picked up a gift for a friend, you know, or a loved one, or to find that it's just stuffed in a box a few years later? After all, you know, the Samsung player was a quality expensive item. Why was it not used? Now, I'll tell you why. Jason failed to match the value of the product with my value system. Now, let me explain. Although I stopped buying movies years ago, I never actually stopped watching them. I simply went to the theater or watched most of my movies by streaming them online from, you guessed it, Netflix, right? So Jason, you know, he had the best intentions, but he didn't know some of the key value points of this type of product. So he couldn't convey them to me. And I'm embarrassed to say, I didn't value it as well as I should have. Now, my story has a happy ending. Some time later, I was cleaning up my entertainment cabinet. Uh, I flipped on the player and spent like 30 seconds, just 30 seconds, tinkering with it, and it discovered, and then I discovered that it played, lo and behold, <clears throat> uh, Netflix movies. So I was instantly in love, and today we use this player every day with the kids <clears throat> for us, for everything. It has completely improved our lives, and all it took was 30 seconds of education, and the value of the product came into synchronization with our life. And that's what I'd like to do, do for you today, is to spend a little bit of time with a few products that demonstrate how you can match the technology to the lifestyle of every type of person in your life. And that's from student to grandma, coworker to boss. Let me show you how to identify and convey the value to the receiver of your, uh, to the receiver of your gift and improve their lives as a result. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to throw this in there. I really love David Allen. Um, 
you know, he's got this great book. It's called uh, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. But this quote really spoke to me. Anxiety is, the, is caused by a lack of control, organization, preparation, and action. And my goal for you today is to give you less stress this holiday season by giving you some tips, ideas, and, and uh, a way of thinking to shop so that you can identify the right product fit for the type of people in your life and be able to convey the value of those products to your gift receiver. <clears throat> so um, let me start with three quick questions. Um, how many of you know what's new, what actually works, and uh, you know there is a difference between what's new and what actually works. Uh, how many of you are overwhelmed with daily innovations of new products on the market, bombarded with advertisements on the TV and in the internet? Um, you know, that's, that's kind of hard to differentiate what's the right thing to get. <clears throat> and, of course, the holidays are busy season for scammers. Are you worried about becoming a victim? Uh, I'm not sure if you've been watching primetime television, but if you are, you've probably seen uh, uh, some video advertisements from the Hawaii's uh, Better Business Bureau. Uh, it's, uh, they have a uh, is, it, is it for real campaign. Uh, so if you get something in the mail or if you get something in your email or a phone call you can always ask is this for real and uh, we'll kind of go through some of the methods that scams come in and how to protect yourself from them but we do have a lot to do uh, but you know I really want to go through how to be informed and how to avo avoid these impulse buys how to avoid overspending uh, I want to give you some shortcuts and insider secrets some smart shoppers know uh, such as me uh, I, I don't like lines so I found ways to avoid them many others have as well uh, buying online of course has become uh, the standard for holiday season and of course finding those discounts uh, you know sometimes is timing sometimes is uh, just knowing where to go and I'd like to share some of those with you and um, of course, we're going to end with some scams that you're likely to encounter this holiday season and how to protect yourself against them. <clears throat> and uh, if we do have time at the end, I sure would like to answer some of your questions uh, about some of these products and services and how maybe uh, we can be of better value to you. <clears throat> now, I, I'd like to tease you with a little bit of bonus. Uh, at the end of the uh, presentation, I'd like to give you, uh, you know, the Tilla's top 12 holiday tech gifts, and uh, that is a, uh, a list of the, uh, of the top 12 picks, uh, some of which we are, are in our uh, presentation here today, and it's also going to be a uh, PDF download of this presentation, so that way you can have a copy for yourself in case I went too quickly through some of this because we do have a lot of stuff to go through. <clears throat> um, you know, some of you on the call may not have met me before, so I'd like to introduce myself. You know, I am a, a veteran IT specialist. I, I like to partner up with businesses. I, I develop technology solutions. Uh, the goal is to become uh, much more efficient in the business, uh, to develop a peace of mind for the owners. And I, I do work typically with small to medium-sized businesses, so less than 50 computers. And I've worked with Hawaii businesses since 2006. And uh, it all started when I helped launch uh, Best Buy's Geek Squad Business Technology Division here on Oahu. Uh, have had a, a regular spot on the KHL Morning Show and uh, Think Tech Studios TV show. And I'm really proud of having 100% client success rate. And what that means is that what we do for them improves their business. So I, I really like that. So <clears throat> Now, jumping right in, uh, I like, I'm going to start with a few customer profiles. And uh, these are people who are in your life that uh, you're probably going to be shopping for this holiday season and would like to know what to get them. So uh, the first customer profile is the Gadget Guru. Second is Sport and Style, stylish and sporty people. Third is the Gamer. <clears throat> Fourth is the Home Office. Fifth is the Student slash Music Enthusiast. And sixth is people really invested in high-tech living. Uh, now, of course, you're going to have some overlap in these different categories, uh, but overall, you'll be able to recognize people in your life based on the descriptions that I give you of these six customer profiles. <clears throat> uh, in addition, I'm going to give you one more thing, which is a DV value. This is a drawer value. Uh, this, is a, this is something actually kind of fun. Uh, we like to put this against uh, every product. A drawer value means how likely is this product to end up in a drawer within a year or so? 
And I, I, I'm sure if you were to open a drawer somewhere in your home, you'd find some piece of electronic in there, and you'd say, wow, I really thought this was cool at some point. Why is it in this drawer not being used? And so that DV value, uh, here's a perfect example, is the Microsoft Zune. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic product when it first came out. This is many years back. But of course, ended up in my drawer rather quickly as smartphones and other technology adopted what the Zune could do into it. So the Microsoft Zune always had a very high DV, uh, but the iPad, uh, on the flip side, was always very low. So any iPad from version 1 all the way to the new one that we have today, the iPad Air 2, um, those are always very high, had high usage value, and typically only get retired when either A, the battery dies, or T or B, uh, it gets damaged, uh, you know, either by you or uh, what I see a lot of is kids. They just love iPads. So that's the DV value that I'm going to be assigning the different products that we go through as we go through the presentation. <clears throat> So let's start with the first customer profile. This is the Gadget Guru. And I, I, you know, I've got a little picture of a guy there that could represent someone in your life. Uh, characteristics, are they're typically early adopters, meaning they like new technology. They want to get the newest thing. Um, they chase quality brands and premium services, such as Amazon Prime, Apple, Samsung, Sony, you name it the big names. They're not typically that interested in the B and C class uh, products. Uh, and, you know, an interesting fun fact is that they're not necessarily tied to high income or a lot of disposable income. They just like the newest, coolest stuff. So you may have someone in your life and uh, who is a gadget guru. Let's take a look as to what might impress them. Um, oh, before we jump on. So the key thing is th these are the values of the gadget guru. Um, so they really like features. So whatever product you're looking at, look for features, look for upgrades and unfortunately uh, the products that they get into uh, are usually are high in, on the DV scale. Uh, what that means is that uh, because of the nature of being a new product uh, there's a lot of it that ends up in your drawer and uh, because of that uh, you know we have a very short shelf life sometimes two year maximum life um, <clears throat> which is too bad, but you should know that this is the downside of having these gadget guru uh, type gifts. iPhone 6 is a perfect example. Uh, an iPhone 6, uh, as you know, just came out and uh, it was very successful. Over 10 million people uh, lined up overnight to come get this new product. There are two different versions. There's the 6 and the 6 Plus. <clears throat> now the regular iPhone 6 is for everyone. That's the 4.7. The Gadget Gurus, they want the 6 Plus. It's big. It's 5.5 inches. Of course it has the all new design. It seamlessly blends aluminum and glass. It's got the fastest uh, CPU that they put in an iPhone yet. It has the A8 processor. Uh, it has the 8 megapixel camera and of course the iOS 8 update and I'm not sure if you um, remember from a webinar I did a few months back uh, where I introduced the iPhone 6 before it came out and I said you know what they're going to be rolling out the iOS 8 but they're going to do it on all the products as well and sure enough if you do have an older iPhone or an older iPad those products have also been updated to iOS 8. Um, one other characteristic of the newer uh, Apple products is that they all have the biometric reader. Uh, it's a um, multi-platform uh, multi kind of sandwich uh, with uh, actually has a nice crystal on the top which makes it a, a very nice smooth touch. Uh, it reads biometric uh, fingerprints and allows you to make purchases and unlock your device. Very useful. Your Gadget Girl is going to want the 6 Plus, not the 6. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Now let's take a look at our DV score. Uh, DV on this, DV1. So uh, it's not likely to end up in your drawer, but because of the fact that the iPhones have a glued-in battery, uh, that means that uh, it's not something that's easily removed or changed. Uh, it's very likely that once the battery dies, which can be about two years, you're going to be buying the new iPhone for them. And of course, uh, an iPhone 6 Plus means uh, that uh, next year we may be seeing a 7 and an 8 the year afterwards. Your Gadget Guru is not going to be so uh, enthralled with the iPhone 6 a few years down the line. So DV for now is going to be high usage, but uh, also in the end, um, short lifespan. 
Next for your Gadget Guru is, of course, the iPad Mini 3. Um, now, I'm, I've been a fan of iPad Mini since day one. I, I believe that they are perhaps the best designed tablet on the market, and uh, everyone is still playing catch-up. Uh, the 7.9-inch Retina display, that they've set the standard for an 8-inch tablet. Um, and, uh, of course, with every revision, they make it better and better. Uh, iPad Mini 2 had a much higher resolution Retina display for the screen and a little bit better processor. iPad Mini 3 continues down that line. <clears throat> Of course, uh, you know Apple needs to make some sort of changes throughout um, throughout its upgrades. So the two most visible changes on the Mini Three uh, are the cases. So you have a nice gold out, uh, exterior. There's a gray and of course a silver, um, and then it also has the biometric reader uh, for unlocking and for making purchases in the App Store. Uh, it, it has a much better processor, 64-bit, A7, and uh, one other thing which I thought was very interesting is it has a dual microphone setup. So previous iPads, um, sometimes the sound was a little bit strange. This way you have your dual microphones, it's on the outside of the case, and they've added some additional camera software that lets you do time-lapsing videos, some better uh, video editing, and uh, of course you know, Apple, when they bring out a new product, it's not going to be cheap. Uh, they do start at $399, and uh, I believe uh, some of the ones with the carrier, uh, so such as AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, the uh, carrier of, uh, data network capability, those can run in the seven or 800 range at the, at the high end. Uh, but they do have a very high uh, use value, the DV, of course, is very low. It's not likely to end up in your drawer for a number of years. It does suffer from the same unfortunate problem as other Apple products uh, that the, that the uh, battery is glued in. You're not going to be able to take it out and change it. So when the battery does die or your kids eventually throw it across the room because they're fighting over it, uh, that would be a situation I encounter. Uh, and some other parents that I talk to, uh, that's probably what's more likely to end the life of this product before anything else. But otherwise, much more useful, in my opinion, than a standard iPad. Uh, it has a, uh, it's much easier to carry around. It's roughly the size of a paperback. If you don't have an iPad mini, I strongly encourage you to look at one. They are awesome. Uh, so, of course, the last one I, I'd like to feature for the Gadget Guru is the Galaxy Note 4. You may have seen uh, recent commercials for it. Uh, it it's all over the, uh, the TV. Uh, they, they do have a better build quality, and uh, when I took one apart, uh, I could really see that uh, it's, it's very easy to disassemble, so the battery can pop right on out. Uh, it it is uh, about the same size as the 6 Plus. It's like uh, just a little bit bigger. It's like a 5.5 versus 5.7 in screen. Um, and uh, it is unfortunately not, it doesn't have any of the weatherproofing options as does the uh, S5. Um, but, uh, you know, as a little bit of a side note, I would like to remind you that if you do have an S5 and it, you do have those, those, that weatherproof option, which is the sport model, uh, what you want to do is you want to get a passive charger. The passive charging capability um, makes it so that the, the end does not break off. So uh, over time, plugging and unplugging the phone with your charger is going to make it so that the water can get inside that little slot. And uh, if you have the passive charger, you avoid that problem. So that's a little tidbit bonus for you, is that the passive chargers are a great tool for your uh, weatherproof version of the Galaxy S5. So uh, be sure to look at that. But as for the Galaxy Note 4, still excellent device. The stylus has been there uh, since the previous versions. Uh, it does have the Android 4.4 KitKat. And uh, just overall, when you pick up the phone, it doesn't feel as cheap as its predecessors. It does have that stronger build quality. And that removable battery is always a plus for me because, uh, you know, I like to use devices and I like having spare batteries. Uh, so should you, going online is a good place to find extra batteries, uh, as well as some local vendors here. Um, I'm sure you can find them using Google. So I, I encourage you that this is probably one of the best uh, Android-based phones uh, that you're going to find. It is the biggest and strongest and most versatile. So Samsung has really done their homework, uh, finding good products and matching the product with what 
consumers are looking for and uh, so I, I commend them for that. I'm going to give this one also a DV of 1. Uh, it's not likely to end up inside of your drawer. Uh, I would have even rated it maybe even a 0 if you plan on keeping it more than a couple years but unfortunately as a gadget guru you're going to want the latest thing and having a, a, a Galaxy Note 4 two years from now may make you uh, feel like you're you're not on the uh, on the top of the roller coaster, as, as you would put it. So, in summary, the Gadget Guru, uh, they really find impactful value with features. They're looking for bragging rights. And um, impactful features, of course, <clears throat> mean having uh, biometric things, meaning having better processors, more memory, uh, better display. Those are things that give them the bragging rights. When they bring out their new fancy gadget and show it to their coworker, they can say, well, my display has a better resolution than yours. Um, so really look for products that match this criteria. Uh, so it may not necessarily be one of these products that I've shown you, uh, but look for something that's innovative that will give them bragging rights at the office. <clears throat> um, now, jumping into our, our second category, we have sport and style. Now, uh, people in this category, they're, they're generally athletic and they're driven by aesthetic details. So having a really beautiful product is attractive to them. Um, now, they also really appreciate sleek, polished, and well-built products. And the good news is with uh, those people who are in the sport and style category is that they have relatively, um, you know, you know they, they have high, uh, low DV. So these products are going to be used for years. Uh, they're not all about getting the latest and greatest. They're getting about something that is more beautiful and a quality product. Um, of course, the first one to demonstrate this is the Galaxy Gear S. Uh, I was fiddling with one of these the other day, and um, you know, wonderful product. Uh, it works very well. I really enjoy the white uh, band. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of these uh, smart watches in the next couple of years. This is the first one that is network connected, and uh, that means if you go to the Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, or AT&T store, you can actually put a SIM card into this thing and make and receive phone calls. Uh, you know, the Dick Tracy dream has finally come true. Here you go. There it is. Uh, it has the curved uh, AMOLED display. Um, it, it's it's pretty neat, and uh, in fact, because it is very bright, as you turn your wrist, it's very easy to see the display. Uh, it doesn't reflect as much as uh, some of the other ones out there. And it has, of course, the biometric thing. Uh, this is a, this is actually a very interesting point with the sport and style category, is that uh, typically uh, those people who are at the gym are also very interested in getting feedback about this, so uh, about their activities, about their body. And so uh, the Galaxy Gear S will give that uh, to those, uh, you know, to people who wear it, and it has a very uh, minimal uh, impact on their actual uh, lifestyle. Now you may have seen that the DV has popped up, the drawer value. I put here a three on here. Now, and I'll tell you why. As cool as this product is, um, there's one thing that the sport and style uh, people like to do is they like to change their outfits. And uh, being able to change your outfit sometimes means uh, a white watch won't match with that. Or should I say a white big watch won't match with that. Uh, also, um, in, in talking to others who have actually worn this thing overnight to see how well it works, uh, it wasn't exactly accurate. The uh, one that's coming up from Microsoft is a little bit more accurate. And uh, you know, just the, the fact that it doesn't have as much flexibility in terms of its look uh, is, is leads me to believe that it's going to end up in the drawer pretty soon. So as cool as it is, as functional as it is, it's not likely to go with every outfit that someone who's interested in style is going to want to wear. And uh, because of that, it's going to end up spending less and less time on the wrist. Uh, I've also, uh, you know, just in general, if you know anyone who's had a, had a smartwatch, they usually tend to wear them for about a month or two, and then they get in the way of typing or driving we're doing things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis that where their wrist is resting on something. And, uh, you know, they end up kind of shuffling with it, moving it around. And, you know, I don't know too many people who wear watches anymore. 
uh, everyone looks at their phone. I'm not sure if that trend is going away, but you know, Apple is banking on it next year. Microsoft is banking on it next year. I hope I'm wrong, um, but uh, you know, the smart watches are, are something that needs a little bit more flexibility. And I think once the uh, manufacturers figure that out, uh, you're going to find something. Uh, shifting in this category. Now our next product actually demonstrates what I'm talking about. This, this uh, product is called the Misfit Shine. And at the top there you're going to see that it, it looks like a little tiny flying saucer. Uh, it's a, uh, uses RFID and uh, it communicates, actually no, it's RFID, it uses RFID and Bluetooth. And it communicates with your phone uh, everything from your heart monitor to uh, See what does it have here? Yeah, it's a wearable biometric fitness monitor. So it does heart rate, it does sleep, and so the key is that it has a, it's relatively inexpensive, and it's compatible with tons of wearable accessories. So if you go to their website, uh, you're going to see the first thing pop up is a bunch of Victoria's Secret uh, pajamas, because you can take this Misfit Shine and this little tiny little disc, slip it in certain spots uh, on your body. I believe one is in your chest, one is on your wrist, one is on your ankle, and and uh, it'll monitor your sleep. So the key, the key advantage I believe with this product is uh, one, it's relatively inexpensive. Two, simple to understand. It's just a little heart rate thing. And three, it's compatible with tons of wearable accessories. You'll see down over here on the corner, in the left-hand corner, there's a there's a very cool little looking necklace you can slip that into. Uh, so no one even knows that you're wearing this uh, this heart rate and biometric reader. Uh, fitness monitor. You can put it on your wrist as a um, as a, you know something while you're running. And of course, having it waterproof means that if you decide to surf, uh, it can still pick up that information and broadcast it to your phone when you get back onto land. Uh, unless, of course, you have one of those Samsung waterproof uh, Galaxy phones, in which case you could take it surfing with you. Uh, the idea is that it's uh, being waterproof uh, also. Because of its build, it has a four-month battery life. Of course, the batteries are fairly inexpensive. And uh, the downside is, however, it is an iOS-only uh, product. So if you want to use it, you better have an Apple device. Uh, but it does have this nice sleep monitor. Uh, it has a food journaling um, bit in its software, so you can put in there what you're eating. It can count your steps. It does your calories. It does your distance. Now, because of all these things, I'm going to give it a fairly low drawer value. Um, a product that, that is flexible and low cost is probably going to be used more. And, of course, as it gets damaged and lost, it's fairly easy to replace. So there's not a lot of anxiety behind, oh, shoot, I lost my Misfit Shine in the ocean. So what? Get another one for 100 bucks. Two tanks of gas. Not a big deal. So... Um, you know, and the fact that if, if you're going out, you can wear it as a necklace. If you're going jogging, you can wear it as a as a as essentially a replacement for a wristwatch. So these these things uh, together make it a very uh, desirable product, and it's something that you can convey the value of to someone who's into sport and style. Uh, so just in summary of the sport and style category of people, you want to really find value in tech that provides feedback about their life, uh, active lifestyle. Now, uh, of course, that's going to come in the, in the combination of software. It's going to come in the combination of hardware. So look for those key characteristics in whatever you're shopping for. Um, uh, the good news is <clears throat> the sport and style category people, they have a relatively low drawer value. So that means that whatever you get them should provide them years of value. Now. Jumping on to the next category, I know I'm going a little bit fast here, but uh, you know we are, we I do have a lot to cover. The gamer, uh, you'll, you'll notice this guy here is uh, wearing a Dakine shirt. Uh, the gamers really, uh, these kind of uh, you know people, it's it's a very interesting category. Uh, there's a lot of uh, time and energy that's gone into this. Uh, I could talk about gamers for a much longer period of time, but we're going to go through it quick. Now, the idea is with gamers is that they tell, uh, they like games that tell a story. Uh, games that uh, have some sort of legacy behind them. Uh, sometimes they're multi-generational, such as Mario or Zelda. And uh, because of this, they have a relatively uh, lower drawer value for the games. Um, however, they have a fairly short lifespan. So they're likely to be recycled or traded in pretty quickly. Uh, and part of this is uh, intentional with the industry. They do uh, want to have seasonal releases of games. And of course, because of this, uh, 
you're always going to see something every Christmas, some new version of a classic game that you've seen before. Um, this year, unlike last year, there are no major system uh, releases. These are X Xbox, Sony, Nintendo. So this year it's mostly games. Uh, I've already started to see the big game commercials on primetime. So uh, you're probably going to see a lot of commercials for the games I'm about to talk about. Um, but of course, in order for a game to work, uh, one of the uh, key characteristics of successful games is that they bring in multiple players, and those players are not necessarily in the same room. They can be across the world. And in order to communicate with those players, you do need some form of audio and microphone. And the Turtle Beach uh, series, it's, it's really funny because uh, decades ago, Turtle Beach made probably the best sound cards on the market, and they've now switched to gaming headphones, and that's their niche. Uh, they make fairly low-cost headphones, uh, but they are specific to the gaming station that you are using, uh, but they will work for PC any way you look at it. Uh, the, the headphones are noise-canceling. Now, of course, if you go shopping for noise-canceling headphones, you expect to uh, spend a uh, hundred plus dollars, but these ones are not. Uh, they, they're they affordably priced. They're between thirty and sixty dollars for Turtle Beach and they do have some wireless versions and uh, you know because it is a pair of headphones it's something that's likely to be used quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to give it a DV of two because it's also likely to be broken and wear out and of course no one wants to wear ratty old headphones and so of course they do have different versions of headphones with different colors. I, I showed a little white version down here in the middle of the, of the uh, screen but um, you know they're, they're good to get uh, I recommend looking online I've even seen some of these at auction for less than 20 bucks and uh, you know the real high-end ones can be 60 or 70 so very affordable if you have a gamer uh, new set of headphones always appreciate it um, you've probably started to see ads for the World of Warcraft uh, game that's coming out this is a PC only game and uh, one of the uh, I guess the the stories behind uh, World of Warcraft is that uh, the World of Warcraft is is a game with a story, kind of like Lord of the Rings, right? And then at the end of the first Lord of the Rings series, um, you know, the ring ends up in the lava pit and the ring is destroyed, right? Well, the franchise can't die there, so they kind of did a reboot and they went back and and they they did a prequel with the Hobbit, and those are the series of movies that they're doing now. Uh, same thing with World of Warcraft, the uh, story completed. Uh, two years ago, and this is the first release since then. And uh, so, you know, this is kind of like an alternate reality, you know, time travel type situation. A little bit far-fetched, but you know what? For uh, for fans of World of Warcraft, uh, the game goes on, and I'm sure that it's going to be a massive hit. This came out Tuesday, and uh, you know, the price of the game is about 50 bucks. But of course, because this is a network game, you're going to want to pay uh, either 15 bucks a month or um, buy that uh, gamer a annual subscription, which is about another $120. Um, uh, you know, so of course it's got a new story. They promise more adventure. It is a prequel with an alternate dimension type angle to it. Uh, I guess the idea is uh, if you have a good franchise and you have a good following, then go for it. Um, the uh, drawer value I'm going to give this is a zero or a four. Uh, what that means is that uh, either you're going to love it or they're not going to use it at all. Uh, but the one, the average lifespan of a World of Warcraft player in the previous version of the software was a one year time uh, time span. So expect about a one year average out of this game, and um, either they're going to love it or they're going to hate it right off the bat. Uh, the next one is Super Smash Brothers. Uh, this has been Nintendo's flagship product for a couple of years now. It is a, now the fourth generation, of course. It's a fighting game uh, where you get to pick your favorite characters. You can see some of them on the screen, such as Mario and Zelda and Donkey Kong, Metroid, all these, you know, Pokemons, of course, you name it, there's tons of them. And uh, you choose your favorite character, and then you have them fight each other. Pretty simple, right? Uh, that's been keeping the Nintendo uh, Wii U afloat. Uh, the Wii U is a, uh, a video game system that Nintendo released last year. If uh, you haven't heard of it, uh, that's fine. Many people haven't because uh, most people thought it was just a little portable uh, gaming tablet when actually that's the interface to the gaming system. So uh, it, is a, it is a new gaming system and uh, there's a, of course a mobile, I'm sorry, a uh, 
a uh, let's see, it's a 3DS. So the 3DS is the portable version of the uh, of the infamous uh, Game Boy originator from the 90s. So uh, it's uh, it is currently still out on the on the mobile platform, and it is available uh, for your home. And uh, you know, I'm going to give this a DV of three. There's a good chance uh, that uh, it's going to bring uh, family members together. It's going to give bring gamers together. Uh, but of course, they keep bringing out new versions of this uh, software of this game. So I wouldn't expect it to last too long. But it might be fun for you know a couple months. So in summary, the gamer, uh, you know, the gaming industry has a very uh, high fan base. It has a very loyal fan base. But uh, but you know, high product churn. That means that whatever you get is going to be outdated very quickly. Um, relatively high DV in this category, so uh, you're, you're going to see things uh, that end up in your drawer pretty quickly. And um, you know, look for games in this category that match that individual gamer's life situation. So think about games such as Family Fun. Uh, of course, that's why Guitar Hero became so successful. Uh, look for games that maybe provide action excitement to someone who maybe doesn't have a lot of action excitement in their life. Or think about creativity, and uh, that's where a lot of the uh, younger children's uh, games come in. Uh, you know, look for life situation match. So instead of looking for a game for your gamer friend that you think they would like based on how shiny the packaging is, think about your friend first. Think about their characteristics, what they would value uh, brought into their life, and then find the game that matches that. Uh, we have next in our next category the student slash music enthusiast. Now, um, you know, one thing about you know the students, and uh, you know, I can probably relate this back to when I was at UCLA. Um, you know, I, I'm a I'm a tech guy. I I like to have all the kind of gadgets, and you know, I have phones and things to plug into walls uh, overflowing everywhere but in a classroom environment tech can either be uh, an advantage or it can be a distraction for me it's a distraction when I see something that lights up I have to play with it I'm not going to pay attention in class uh, but a lot of other students are just the opposite they they can they really value their tech and it gives them a chance uh, to take notes faster and quicker. So there are some products that bridge that gap. We're not going to get into them here. Uh, but if you do want to Google Smart Pen, that is one. Uh, there, there are some other ones that, uh, that you can really find advantageous. But because uh, you know we are in the middle of school season and uh, the holidays are the break between, you might want to give your student or music enthusiast some tools that give them a little bit of an advantage before going back to school. Um, in, uh, cat, uh, products in this category typically have high usage, uh, but they also have a short lifespan. So uh, quality items are highly valued, but just be aware that the lifespan for them is going to be pretty short. Um, and the good news for you uh, shoppers is that most student and music tech is relatively low cost. So you can go out and get it and not feel too bad that you spent thousands of dollars on something that won't be used. Um, the first one I'd like to jump into is this product called HP Stream 7 Windows Tablet. Now you're probably thinking, oh boy, this is just another junky tablet, uh, low cost item that, uh, you know, Attila here is trying to push me. But you may notice that I've put a little icon down here at the bottom, and that is for the Intel Atom processor. Intel's put a lot of time and energy into making a processor that's good on mobile devices. So all those little, you know, $99 tablets you've you've probably seen don't stack up very well because they have such a poor processor. That's been the Achilles heel of low-cost tablets. Now Intel's brought that to the to the Microsoft platform with HP and put together something fairly attractive. Uh, now, there's a little bit of a side note. You may see a Toshiba in this category. Uh, it's also very good, but doesn't have as much storage, so that's why I featured the HP. Uh, however, to be fair, the HP is hard to get. Um, you may have to settle for the Toshiba one. Also very good, good build quality. Um, you know, I played with it and, uh, you know, banged it on a desk, and it didn't make a dent. So, um, of course, the new line of low-cost tablets with Intel to Atom processors, you're going to start seeing this all across the board. This is one of the first generations released. Uh, this particular model has a 7-inch touchscreen, and it's got 1 gig of RAM but 32 gigs of storage, which is pretty useful. Now, you got to remember, this is running Windows 
so Windows 8.1 means it's running Windows. Uh, if you go to the trade shows, they've been showing off this tablet plugged into big TV screens and a Bluetooth keyboard, and they're using it as regular desktop computers. It's that strong. Uh, it has the dual cameras, it has a very good battery life, four and a half hours, and it has that micro SD slot, so as you take pictures and pictures and pictures, or store more and more files and movies and videos and music and everything on this device, it can continue to expand. Um, of course, you can connect to third-party devices using this uh, this thing. I mean, think of this as more of a laptop or or desktop replacement. <clears throat> and this is the secret: 99 bucks, <clears throat> very cheap. <clears throat> now, Office Depot is going to have this on sale Black Friday for 79 dollars. Pretty good. But the regular price is 99 bucks. If you go on Amazon, I believe they were sold out. A lot of the Office Depots on the island were also sold out. <clears throat> if you want to hang out to Black Friday, you can save yourself that 20 bucks. But all in all, I would say this one is probably the one to watch, and you're going to see more and more devices like this. Um, I'm going to give this a DV of two, uh, just because uh, yeah, I feel it's a good quality product. But either uh, you know you're a student uh, or um, you know worker are going to use this uh, a lot or they're not really going to use it that much at all and kind of still stick with their standard desktop or laptop. Um, <clears throat> we're actually, just as a little bit of a side note, considering this for our field tax because it's more durable than a laptop and because it is running Windows, we can do all the typical stuff we're used to seeing with Windows. Uh, it comes with one year subscription to Microsoft Office 365, so that's uh, your Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, all that good stuff, and we could even technically do the webinar uh, using one of these tablets. Uh, maybe we'll try that the next time around. So, cool product. Uh, I say keep uh, keep an eye out for it, as well as others that are going to be in this category. And Intel made this all all possible. So thank you, Intel, for putting in the time to make a good processor that's going to give us low cost, high performance tablets. Now the next one is this product called Syntrix. Uh I saw this in uh, Success Magazine probably about six months ago. I went to their website and I saw the video and I thought it was the most amazing thing on earth. And uh, what it is is it's the next generation karaoke machine. And uh, this is great for students as well as all music enthusiasts. Um, the idea is that it, they take this voice processing software that they use in professional music studios to auto-tune and give special effects to your voice and it makes you sound amazing. Now, uh, it was created by the two guys who made the Guitar Hero original uh, software, and then they sold it. And uh, it was uh, recently featured on Shark Tank. I think I saw it maybe one or two weeks ago. So, of course, everything online is temporarily sold out. Uh, you can, however, go there and uh, be put on the waiting list uh, or pre-order. Uh, it is about 350 bucks, but you get a lot of things. You get the microphone, you get the processor, you get the stand, you get uh, a little amplifier. So it's the complete kit. You're not, you're not, you know, piecing it together and it's all 300 for this and 250 for that, and you know, you're spending a thousand bucks by the end of the day. Nothing like it. 350 bucks. Very cool. Now. The reason I found it uh, uh, important to be to put into the student music enthusiast category is because it has high utility. Uh, it can it can strengthen family bonds, and that's the reason karaoke has become so popular in the first place. Is because it's a uh, it's not a singular sport. It's not a video game you're playing by yourself or a book you're reading by yourself. It brings everyone together. So it is a community piece of technology. So I encourage. Um, I encourage uh, anyone who's uh, you know having uh, you know Thanksgiving dinner and maybe wants to have or you know after Christmas want to have uh, some sort of you know singing competition. This is the one to do it with, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'm going to give that actually a DV of zero. Um, what that means is that uh, if you get this thing and you use it with your family, if it's a right fit, you guys can get years and years of use out of it, and it can really help um, you know tie some bonds that maybe have been loosening over these past few years. So. In summary, the student music enthusiast, uh, they enjoy products and value products that unify social circles. Uh, they're of high value uh, to students and musicians. Um, you want to look for products in this category that match this value. So think about unifying social circles, right? That's really important. Um, last, uh, now we have two more categories to go here. So we have the home office. Now, one thing about the home office is that uh, you know, the relatively low desk, uh, drawer value. So whatever you get for your home office, probably going to be used for a while. Bad news is that because of these relatively long product, product life cycles, right, 
you're not buying a printer every month. So there's not a lot of new products that are very exciting in this category. This is not typically the exciting category, but you may have someone on your list who falls into this. So what I recommend is to seek quality uh, builds, seek quality brands. That's going to give you maximum longevity. So at least if you have this printer or scanner or whatever you're going to use in your home office for five years or more, at least it works well every time. Um, first one I'd like to show is something called the SanDisk Connect. <clears throat> and uh, this is fairly interesting. Uh, this is a new uh, type of uh, product where it's a, it's a wireless attached, uh, wireless storage. So you put something on this and then you put it on your desk and it can be accessed by your tablet, smartphone, whatever. So the idea is instead of sharing content by going over your existing wireless network, you can take this thing in the car and share pictures and movies, whatever. So you can have up to eight devices, three streams going at once. <clears throat> and uh, the reason I chose this product is because it, it's an example of a line of wireless network attached storage devices that are coming out. Uh, there's a number of these that take uh, solid state drives, they take uh, regular, uh, you know, two and a half inch drives and they and they put them available on the wireless using a prior, uh, wireless LAN. Um, however, in my experience with doing uh, dealing with products like this in the past, a good example is iFi, which you don't see anywhere anymore. Uh, the technical issues that these products typically have result in low, uh, low reliability. It also has a built-in battery. So although it has a four-hour battery life, uh, once that battery dies, it's pretty much garbage. So I'm going to give this one a DV of five. DV of five means it's guaranteed to end up inside of your drawer. And that could be within one or two years. It could be uh, fancy and fun and interesting and innovative, but if it has low utility, uh, it's probably not worth getting. So I put that as DV of five, and you won't find that on my top 12 list. So I wanted to put one of these in here to demonstrate what you should look out for. Um, well, one thing to do keep an eye on is the Surface Pro 3. Now, this is the something that's called a phablet. So it's uh, it's kind of like a phone and a tablet put together, and uh, you know you, you can use it for all kinds of stuff. But the idea is that this is my, uh, Microsoft's third generation product uh, that is a uh, Surface Pro. Uh, so it's you know as with every revision, it's lighter, it's thinner, it's got a bigger screen, so it is a little bit bigger than the Pro 2. Uh, and there's a variety of configurations available. Uh, so it takes advantage of Intel's i3 processor and it goes all the way up to the i7. Uh, and so that, uh, you know, having that, uh, that processor gives it a, uh, you know, it's good for work. You can actually use it for real day-to-day -day activities in the office and on the road. Uh, office 365, of course, because it's running Microsoft Windows. Um, and I wanted to bring up the build quality which is a fairly important point. Uh, we've had customers call us a number of times over the years. Their Surface Pro has mysteriously stopped working. Uh, so there's been some build quality issues with the first and the second generation. Uh, they figured out a lot of the bugs and fixed them by the third. Uh, they've, they've stayed true to the nature of the product, which is having a nice stylus, making it touch screen, uh, light, and uh, able to compete with the Apple products. Uh, but they've had the build quality issues that Apple, of course, had early on, but people have now forgotten about. Um, price tag on this item is uh, between 800 to around uh, just under $2,000, depending on the one you choose. So yes, it does cost more than an iPad, but it can also replace your tablet. Um, so I'm going to give this a DV of 0 or 5. Either they're going to love it, or whoever you buy this for is going to hate it. Um, in general, uh, you know, clients who, who jump on the Surface Pro really like it. Uh, I like the ones that I've used, and uh, but in general, uh, you know, I, I personally really enjoy the Apple products. So for me, I would have been in a zero, but I know plenty of people who found it a five. So you know, uh, Microsoft, if you're listening, feel free to send me a few, and I will. Uh, you can try to convince me otherwise. But for now, I'm going to be in the zero camp. So I'm sorry, I'm going to be in the five camp. So. Let's jump on to the next one. The next uh, home office item, I'm going to summarize with look for improvements to the uh, home office uh, that are long-term. Think of long-term products. Think of quality products. That's where you're going to get your value. And um, seeking quality brands, such as HP, Dell, Microsoft, and Apple. Uh, don't go fooling around with some of these subpar brands. Uh, if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not worth getting. And you know uh, some of the home office products that we talked about here overlap with the high-tech living category. And this is my favorite category. It's the next one uh, coming up. So 
Uh, high tech living is, uh, of, of course, uh, you know, uh, homeowners, right? So homeowners, people live in a, uh, in a in an apartment, a condo, or a home, uh, and you want to look for products that solve problems. That's the key thing. So when you're at home, uh, you don't want to deal with more problems. Uh, that's what you do all day at work. You want to come home and the problems are gone. So tech that solves problems, that's the key thing. Um, now, generally, uh, high-tech living products are not cheap. Uh, they cost money, but they also have a high value and a high return on investment. And those that return on investment comes in two forms, either in an improved experience in the home or it's a cost-cutting uh, device. Uh, I, I didn't really get too much into cost-cutting devices, but there are a lot of new uh, new cost-cutting ones, particularly made by Belkin, so I encourage you to look for those uh, if you are interested in cost-cutting ones. Uh, there's also another one called Kill a Watt, which uh, I wanted to put in here, but we just had too much, uh, too much content. Um, but uh, really keep an eye out for cost-cutting and experience-improving items. So uh, the ones that are the most successful, the most powerful and best high-tech products for the home are the ones that combine both. So look for that. First pick on my list is the iRobot Roomba. Now I, I'm sure you look at this thing and think it is a complete joke, but I assure you it is not. It is a game changer. Um, now they, they've uh, released several series of these uh, Roomba cleaners. This is a new 800 series. Uh, one of the concerns with the previous Roombas is that they didn't pick up all the, the dirt and scuff that's there. Uh, this one has a much stronger motor. Um, and the way that they work is, is you know, they just kind of sit in a corner and then they wake up and they clean all of your hardwood floors or all of your tile uh, by sucking it up and kind of using a little brush to kind of get the corners. And then when it's done, it just goes back to charge. That's it. So when you leave for work, the thing does its thing. The dogs maybe go bananas chasing it around, and then um, you know when it comes back, uh, when you come back home, it's uh, all your floors are clean. Isn't that nice? Um, now the software that makes this possible uh, was originally uh, designed for the military. Uh, uh, the software allows it to find obstacles and not go tumbling downstairs or uh, getting stuck. So uh, that software is something you get to take advantage of with the iRobot. Um, originally, I, I saw a documentary some time back about the iRobot, very interesting. They thought that they could come uh, in and uh, essentially replace uh, gardeners, so uh, they tried making this uh, iRobot type of lawnmower, but uh, it didn't work. Uh, I believe there was two reasons. One is that the zigzag grass cut pattern was not appealing to the eye, and second, um, having a robotic giant uh, machine with sharp blades made people nervous. So uh, I believe they, they correctly went into the, uh, the vacuuming category and have stayed there successfully since. Um, iRobot also makes uh, some other products which are very cool. Uh, there's a scuba which is like a hard floor scrubbing robot and then there's something called a brava which is a, a floor mopping robot. And so uh, you know they use wet and, uh, and brushes and that kind of thing. I believe those have more commercial uses. But if you have a lot of uh, tile floor and you're tired of scrubbing it, uh, you know, investing a little bit extra in a, in a scrubbing robot are, is pretty good. The Bravo one is essentially replaces like those wet wipes you may use. It's like a wet wipe on a stick and you rub it around your floor. Uh, the Bravo is the replacement for that. Um, so the idea is, uh, the reason that this is a successful product and it's valuable is because it combines savings with experience, right? The savings comes in the form of time, right? And, uh, you know, you can spend less time scrubbing your floors. Why waste your weekends vacuuming and sweeping? Uh, and it uses less power. So if you're firing up your vacuum cleaner all the time, uh, you may notice that when you turn on your vacuum cleaner, your light's dim. Well, guess what? Hiko loves vacuum cleaners. Let's give one less electrical appliance a break. Let's 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 use the iRobot Roomba, and that is a uh, a good product to to give you that experience in the home. Uh, I'm going to give this a DV of zero. What that means is it's never going to end up in the trash until it completely fails. But the battery on this is meant to last several years. Uh, it's going to continue to be used and valuable for time to come. Um, 
The second one I have here is the Amazon Fire TV. Uh, this is the most powerful and it's the most full feature digital player on the market. Others in this space are, of course, Apple TV and the Roku. Um, it has some additional features though, such as it allows you to mirror your phone or tablet onto the screen, which is kind of cool if you have some pictures on your phone. You want to share on the big screen with the family? Cool, you can do it. Um, uh, it also ties into the Amazon network, so you get Amazon games, you get Amazon uh, movies, of course, uh, with a Prime subscription. Uh, it has voice search, so you can talk into the remote and search for things and find it on your screen. And uh, it is only 99 bucks, but you can count on a Prime membership in order for this whole device to work. Amazon likes to package products with their Prime subscription, and uh, this product makes it easier for you to enjoy the benefits of all their subscription-based products. I'm going to give this a DV of 1. Uh, there's a good chance you're going to use this for years to come. Uh, either that or if you don't, uh, I'm uh, shame on you. Go ahead and get yourself a Prime membership and enjoy all that the web has to offer. Um, the next one is called an Amazon Echo. And the Amazon Echo is kind of like an all-in-one speech interactive device. Uh, it's, a, of course, a Bluetooth speakerphone. There's more than one product in this category for Bluetooth speakerphones. But the idea is that this voice control changes the user experience. And if you go on Amazon's website, it's right there on the home page. You can watch the little video. Uh, you essentially uh, you know, yell at it to wake up, hey, Alexa. And then you ask it a question, and it'll give you an answer. Fantastic for cooking. I know personally my iPad gets completely uh, disgusting after we've been cooking in the kitchen for some time because we're always searching for cups and measurements and recipes. This thing can replace all that by doing voice only navigation and search. Um, it is uh, about $199, and, but it is only $99 if you do uh, get the Prime subscription. I'm going to give this a DV of three just because you're probably going to use it for some time. But over time, in general, these kind of products tend to fade away. It is one of the first in its, in its category. There's only uh, maybe one or two other vendors that uh, are names that you wouldn't recognize that do make products like this. They're not doing particularly well. So it's going to take some time to catch on. It may be just too early for the market at this time, but it's nice to see something new and innovative out there. And of course, my favorite pick for high-tech living is the Nissan Leaf, third generation. I could talk for two hours on this product. I think it's a fantastic uh, piece of bit. Uh, it has uh, an $8 billion investment from Nissan behind it. What that means essentially is that if Nissan can't make this product work, you may not see a lot of Nissans on the road anymore. Um, automakers now see themselves in the gadget industry, and this is a gadget in every sense of the word. Uh, of course, it has an 85-mile range. But this is perfect for Oahu. Uh, the dealer will tell you about 100, 120 mile range, but realistically, 85 mile, 85 mile range. Um, I particularly enjoy the uh, advantages of not having to deal with mechanics, uh, lost time, oil changes, and gas stations. Uh, this will cut that entirely out of your drive. Uh, less moving parts, of course, means less parts to break. If you look at it, there's, uh, I believe the Tesla has 12 moving parts. The Leaf has something in that range, too. Um, uh, you get the free street parking in downtown, and uh, you get reserved stalls and shopping areas. Uh, you can also change the meter in your home uh, to a uh, time of use meter, and uh, and an EV uh, use meter I believe is even less. So when you go, when you take this car out, you drive around all day, come home, plug it in, much less expensive than paying five plus dollars per gallon for gas. Um, it does have the eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Um, now, uh, I know I'm starting to sound like a car salesman. I'm not. I'm just really enthusiastic about this vehicle. But uh, Nissan recently released the price on a replacement battery pack because that was the anxiety that everyone had about how much it would cost to change this battery. Uh, it, even though it does have a 100,000-mile warranty, if you want to change your battery or if you damage it somehow, it's only five grand. Very inexpensive, considering you'll spend... Uh, probably about 100 bucks just to get a battery for your cell phone. So think about that. Um, I, I've talked to uh, some people who own Leafs. Pretty funny. Uh, often they'll get one inside the household, and then they use it so much that they end up getting two and because the wife gets tired of sharing it with her husband and vice versa. So very good item. I'm going to give it a DV of zero. Once you go, uh, once you go electric, I don't see how you're going to go back, and that is the movement we are seeing just in general uh, on the street. So. Just in summary, high-tech living, I know we're running short on time here, uh, we're looking, look for products in this category that change or uplift the home experience, something that has a high aura, uh, a return on investment, right? Uh, think about high value, think about experience, 
changing items. And of course, think about efficiency, right? So money saving plus an experience changer, those are the winning products. So my top 12 summary of products in this category uh, for everyone are, number one, iPad Mini 3. Go ahead and get one of those. I iPhone uh, 6 Plus, very cool for the uh, gadget gurus. Misfit Shine, also very cool for the sport category. Remember that was that little biometric reader. Turtle Beach headphones for your gamer. Uh, Samsung Gear uh, S, that is the uh, smartwatch. Very cool. Um, you know, more probably more for the uh, for the uh, you know for the tech guru, but uh, you never know. Uh, the HP Stream 7 tablet, that's for your students. Super Smash Brothers for your gamer, of course. Very fun game. Uh, Surface Pro 3 uh, for the worker. Sing tricks to bring the family together and uh, you know have a uh, have a good time together. Uh, Ten iRobot Roomba definitely uh, on my Christmas list and the uh, eleven Amazon Echo. That's the one where you can uh, yell at it and it'll give you answers. Uh, of course, it, you can also uh, tell it to go buy you sheets from Amazon and it'll probably send them to your door too. So that's that I think is Amazon's secret agenda. Amazon Echo number eleven. Number twelve is of course the Nissan Leaf the game changer and it is essentially one big gadget so very cool stuff I know we're uh, short on time here so I'm gonna wrap up real quickly uh, we're talking about the scams uh, that you're probably gonna be experiencing this season we are getting phone calls already uh, we are starting to see the emails coming in that a package could not be delivered don't open that phone call saying that you've won a contest publishers clearinghouse for some reason is is uh, is on the uh, is on the radar right now uh, letters in the mail that look like they're from reputable organizations. Of course, if you go to the post office, there are posters there that, that say uh, if uh, you have to send in $250 to get your $1 million, you're, it's probably a scam, and uh, be wary of that. And, of course, if you're not sure if, you're, uh, if it's a scam, it probably is. And you can contact the Hawaii Better Business Bureau. Or if you're a business with a security issue, you know, we're always happy to help. Uh, this is what our company does. And you can reach us at soshawaii.com. Um, now, of course, thank you for hanging on and uh, and uh, paying attention to our wonderful webinar. And so here is your free gift. Um, if you look over here at uh, this website, www.soshawaii.com uh, slash holiday tech, you can download this presentation in a PDF format as well as the top 12 holiday tech gifts, the ones that I shared um, on the previous slides. So uh, with that, I believe we're just two minutes over time, but I think Ronald will forgive me. Uh, that concludes our presentation. My name again was Attila Suress with SOS Tech Solutions. Take it away, Ronald. All right. Thank you, Attila, for your time and for covering very important information. Mahalo to all of you who participated, and we're glad you joined us today. A brief survey will appear on your screen shortly. Your feedback is important to us, so please take a few minutes to tell us what you thought of this webinar and feel free to get in touch with us at any time. Our contact information is on your screen right now. Mahalo again and aloha.